Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Kunal and I'm in sunny Dar es Salaam today, Tanzania. In an ATR 72 500 series. Today I'll be giving you a tutorial on how to use the HD1000, which is the GNSS found in uh, all of the 500 variants of the ATR fleet. So this is the initial screen that we start off with. So you have your model number and your nav data, which your validity dates and the software that it's running with the engine description as well. My apologies for this uh, white button here. It's supposed to look like that, but it fell out, so we stuffed it with a little paper. But it still works. So with the basic layout, we have uh, route, legs, uh, our departure and arrival, hold, and uh, progress, VNAV, ATC. And uh, these are the select keys. And uh, this is for the brightness, the bright and dim. There's a clear button, slash, previous next for the pages, and uh, menu, data, and execute. So to begin with, we click on root. So here we have root one, this is the origin. If it's boxes, that means that uh, there's nothing in there. Nothing has been programmed. The dash lines is also. So this is an empty, unprogrammed GNSS. So, for example, today uh, we'll be going from Dar es Salaam Airport to Arusha Airport, so we can program that as we go. So, Dar es Salaam, we write the the identifier for the for the airport, which is HTDA, and it comes in the scratch pad. So, this area is called the scratch pad. So, once we write it, anything we write comes here and we plug it in to this box so accordingly we press this button and HTDA goes there similarly for Arusha HTAR and we plug it here the runway in use Dar es Salaam currently is 05 correction actually it's 23 in Dar es Salaam active and we plug that there and it automatically turns to a runway and flight number is PRF422. So that's, of course, that's a flight number that will be given to you by your company. And we can plug it here. So this is done. And now we can proceed to legs. So now we have our route one legs. And as you can see, runway 23 initially from what we set up in the route has showed up there. So now what we do basically is just set up the waypoints. Usually your waypoints will be given to you from your uh, the waypoints will be given to you by uh, the computer flight plan that you generate. So for example now we have uh, for Arusha our routing is usually from runway 23, we'll go to Delta Victor, which is the Dar es Salaam DOR, and we plug that in. And now you'll see this selection that we have to make. So we have two Delta Victors, two DVs. So one of them is a VOR. We have the frequency, it's a VOR DME, the location in uh, G GPS coordinates, and you have your country, which is in Tanzania. And also, DV is also an ADF in this location, which is in RUS, which I believe is Russia. So, definitely, we'll be going with Delta Victor. So, we make our choice from this button here. And thus, we have Delta Victor here. We can now put in our next waypoint. As I know, is MUM Mumtu. This is the TMA boundary for Dar es Salaam. So we can put MUM2 here. And then again, the next waypoint for Arusha is Kilo Bravo. It's KB. And if I put that there. So Kilo Bravo, there's a bunch in the world. So we have uh, Tanzania, 
California, I believe Ukraine and others here. So we'll be going with the one in Tanzania. Kilo Bravo, the first one. And we have Kilo Bravo. So now to set the arrival into Arusha, we can go into the arrival page, departure and arrival. So we have route one. So we can set our departures and arrivals into Dar and arrivals into Arusha. So now Arusha does not have any published approaches. So we'll, all we'll have is runways. So you have your approaches and stars, there's none. So let's just choose runway nine. We'll continue visually after passing Kilo Bravo. So after choosing runway nine, we come back to legs and this is the screen where we have. So now we have Kilo Bravo, then it's empty. So now we can see that there's two pages, one slash two. So we can press next and we'll have runway nine. And it says route dis discontinuity because there is a place where it's empty and then it goes to runway nine. So to remove the discontinuity, we just select like that and then we can go to previous and we can plug that here and just like that we've removed the discontinuity and now we can activate this route so to activate anything we need to press activate and we'll have a light here on execute and just press execute so this is the routing done. I will show you another route in which we can uh, use the departures and arrivals effectively. So for example, we're going from Kilimanjaro, HTKJ, to Dar es Salaam. So let's assume runway 9 in Kilimanjaro. So now we can do here is uh, we can use the departures so for example now in route 2 we have our departures so these are the SIDs for Kilimanjaro we can press departures and now we have all the SIDs on the site and the runways on the site so we have the Atbal Alpha Atbal Echo etc etc we can press next to get all the SIDs that are available so for example, we use the Mumtu 1 Alpha departure out of Kilimanjaro for Dar es Salaam. So you can just press Mumtu 1 Alpha and uh, you can go to legs. So this is route 1, plus route 2, which we have our Kilimanjaro to Dar es Salaam. So now these are the waypoints that come up automatically. This is your standard instrument departure out of Kilimanjaro and now we can go to arrivals and arrivals into Dar es Salaam and we have all the approaches and the stars on this side so let's attempt the RNAV for runway 05 so we have our RNAV and you have your the transition that you have to pick let's pick a Tulo and then we go to legs, route 2, it will always defaultly come to route 1, so you have to pick route 2. And now, whenever you enter something, there will be a route discontinuity because it assumes that you will add more waypoints. So since we are going directly from Mumtu to Atulo, so we can just pick Atulo, like that, and put it on top, and it would remove the discontinuity. And I'd like to show you route 1, if it's visible, on the screens. So this is our active route. Since it's purple, that means it's active. Now, we can see here that runway 23, and then it goes to Delta Victor. And it follows through to Mumtu. I don't think we'll be able to see it as the plane is in such a way it's positioned in to look that way however that's our route and
and uh, usually depending on company policy route one is actually should be your active route so for example we'll be doing this route right now and the route two is the escape route so if we depart out of dar so we can have uh, dar origin would be dar destination dar and it would give us an escape route in case anything fails that, that we have to come back it will give us a route on how to come back quickly but depends on your uh, personal preference and also on your company policy so what I like to do is, is if we're doing multi sectors I would like to set uh, route 1 as the first leg and then route 2 would be the second leg and then I would just activate route 2 and reprogram route 1 but that again depends on the policy that you have so now next thing that we need to set up is the VNAV so we'll come up to this uh, performance page and now we have our gross weight, fuel, zero fuel weight, reserves, transition altitude, cruise altitude, climb, cruise, descent and speed and transition. So now this is what uh, we have to set with the load sheet that we get. So for example you have, uh, currently we have uh, 1,300 on each tank, so that's 2.6 tons of fuel. So we can put 2.6 in the fuel like that, and it's in tons. Zero fuel weight, let's assume, let's assume it's uh, 15 decimal 5 tons. So we put the zero fuel weight in, and we'll have our gross weight. So this will be our taxi weight. Reserves, uh, you will put in your uh, minimum fuel plus diversion fuel and all that. So let's assume as one ton. And the transition altitude out of Dar es Salaam is 2,500 feet. So we can put that in there. Cruise altitudes, we'll get that from the computer flight plan. Also, you can it can be on your discretion. Let's assume flight level 220. And we can put that in there like that. This is your climb speed and gradient. So we can alter the ATR 72 climbs with a speed of 170. So we can plug that there. And uh, the cruise performance expected at flight level 220. We can get that from our QRH, which is here. So we can check, cross check with the weights. It's uh, 18 decimal one, so we'll take 19 tons. So this is our 19 ton page. We're usually in ISA plus 15 conditions. So at 220, we're expecting an IAS of 182, so as per this table, torque and the burn, the IAS and the TAS. So ISA plus 15. 220 is 182. It's an assumption, it's an approximation, but we can use it to get a better estimate. So 182. Descent on your discretion again. So you have your descent speed and the descent angle. So some of us like to fly at 200 knots at 3 degree descents. Some of us like to do 240 at 4. So let's say we want to do 200 knots. We can just put that there and that doesn't change the angle. So if we want to change the angle, we can just put in 200 slash 3 or slash 4.5 or slash 5, uh, whatever you like as a descent angle. So let's assume, let's take 3 for now and we can put that there. And now we have the speed and transition. So speed transition usually is uh, at what altitude would you transition to a certain speed. So this says we'd be flying at 250 all the way to 10,000 feet, which usually isn't correct because the never exceed speed is 250. So I would say that I would fly 200 and I would slow down to 200 when I descend through 5,000, for example. And I'll put that in there. So any changes that we make, I believe you saw the lights come up here. 
So this is a green light and it says execute on the bottom. So once we, if I switch pages or anything happens, all this would disappear or I can just erase and everything would go away. So however, I would press execute and the erase goes off and now this is set in into the GNSS. We use the progress page to see the progress of the flight, which I will explain to you in a future video where I will teach you how to use the GNSS in flight. So we'll go through the progress page and the other functions are like, for example, the hold and everything, and I'll show you that how it works. The ATC button is for future communications. Uh, future, it's like they save a spot for in any advancements that may happen in in the communications so they've reserved a, a button for that however it, it serves no purpose on this on this thing so <clears throat> naturally we usually stay on the progress page or on the ground we like to go to the position reference so to get to there you just press progress and position reference and now this shows us our position with coordinates this is our time and the RNP, ground speeds, and all these things. Also, we can uh, predict the RAM before we depart. So we can just go to active route. We put in the departure time. Let's say it is now 0630. Let's say we're departing at 0700. We can put that in departure time and let's say it'll take an hour and a half so 0830 okay oh messed that up 0830 so it says your average ground speed and we can run BR nav and it runs a prediction on what uh, RNP get and if it's sufficient for us to depart with. Let's see. So it says root OK as filed. So that means we can proceed. Also one thing we can do is uh, go to data before we depart. Oh, I'm sorry, we can go to menu, go to MPC, just, and then we can go to time and flight. So we can set this up for the GNSS. It's uh, not mandatory per se, but uh, it's good to have it filled out So because it helps us to know what went wrong or if anything happened because the GNSS does record every failure and everything that go up through the flight. So if the uh, the date and the time is not correct, it will not record. It will give us false information on uh, of when the failure occurred. So it's good to set this up before every flight. So for example, now it's uh, 6.38. So 0638, we can put that there. So month day, today is the 19th. Okay, let's month and day, so 0419, so 04 April, 19 is the day, put that there, and the year is 2019, and the flight number is 0422. So it updates the date and the time of flight and everything. <coughs> And uh, that's pretty much it on how to use this on the grounds. And uh, in flight, I will tell you how to make uh, reference points by reference of some other fix. So that is useful when, uh, when a, for example, some place does not have a published approach and uh, you can make your own waypoints somewhat of a GNSS. Uh, approach just by yourself we'll discuss that in the next future video all right hope you've enjoyed and do stay tuned for the next one cheers